it's weird being home. <laughs> it's like all the stuff I started sorting for the trip and then the unicorn's fallen. I have another bike now that I've bought a new hardtail. St. Patrick's Day, uh, my clarinet, which I don't play very often, and my piano, which I don't play at all. And yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> home sweet home. I've got to sort so much out this weekend. I have no idea. If anyone wants to buy any Legos, I've got about $5,000 worth of Legos here. <laughs> I've got to sort them all. I started sorting them all by color. I have all the, um, what is it? All the manuals and everything. And then I need to get rid of a bunch of stuff like clothes that don't fit Harry anymore. We're going to get rid of this art table. We'll keep the horse. Um, we're going to get a, a drafting table, like architectural table instead for her artwork. Um, but yeah, just going to try to get rid of as much stuff as I can. So there we go. Home sweet home. It is hot, sticky, and I am tired. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. Busy, busy day, busy night, and I'd like to eat some lunch and catch up on some sleep. So I'll see you when I see you. Good morning. I'm in a business suit. No, not a job interview. I had to go to court. <laughs> so, and nothing, no, no, I didn't do anything bad. Uh, anyway, just the, um, you know, home life stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting being home where I actually get to like dress normal and like look presentable and wear heels and you know all the clothes that you have to breathe in with not like my workout gear I can just like let it out anyway okay so I'm heading over to the VA I've got to go uh, get some uh, paperwork and book some appointments and go talk to some people and get a um, underpriced frappuccino <laughs> since it's cheaper at the VA I want to drive all the way to the VA to get a frappuccino because it's like two dollars cheaper because it's all subsidized um, but yes yeah, so I got to go over there and do some housekeeping and then go home and then I'm home the rest of the day. Um, I think I need to get groceries. I got home yesterday from my flight and I fell asleep at two o'clock in the afternoon. I did not wake up until four o'clock this morning. I literally almost slept for like, almost like 16 hours or something, whatever 2 p.m. until 4 a.m. is. It feels great. I'm glad actually that I got the extra sleep. I needed it so I could look refreshed when I went to court. <laughs> So, um, but that said, I'm now going to the VA, which is only like 10 minutes from my house. And then I think, what else am I doing? Oh, I've got to get groceries. I'll do that tomorrow. Um, don't feel like going to the grocery store all dressed up. <laughs> anyway, it's like, I don't really want, you know, not like, you know, oh, I'm all that. But no, I just don't want like unsolicited, you know, like, oh, you look nice today. I'm like, you have no idea. I've been in the wilderness for three weeks where I had two showers. <laughs> so if only they knew, if only they knew. But they don't so where am i going i'm gonna make a left anyway um yeah so um this weekend's gonna be pretty easy i'm just uh tomorrow i think it's bike ride and then um i've got to work on <laughs> so i'm like in like litigation like life right now i could i don't think i could ever be a lawyer like having to deal with so many like cases but i have the deposition um transcript for the the crash that i witnessed so they sent me the transcript so i have to go through and read everything that I said <laughs> and just make sure that you know I, and, and it's like when I talk on my phone and try to do voice dictation and like my iPhone calls my daughter Harriet Marriott I'm like no she's not a hotel she's a child <laughs> um, so half the words I say are, are British English and they come out completely wrong on my iPhone so it'll be interesting to go through and see what the court reporter actually picked up and I'm like I, I don't think I pronounced it that way like what am I talking about so I'm going to go through and do that and then drop that off tomorrow afternoon. And then Saturday I have a retreat. Um, so they have um, a lot of like free things for veterans in Houston um, through either Combined Arms or other organizations. So I'm going to go to a wellness retreat. And I haven't done yoga or any of that stuff in, in quite a while because of my, my hand injury. So I've got a nice scar on my hand. Um, so I signed up for this wellness retreat. It's free. Um, so I think it'll be it'll be fun to do that at like 8.30 on Saturday morning. It's not far from my house. So hopefully I'll be able to show you a little bit about that. And then Sunday um, with Harriet. And then I have to go back to uh, uh, Vegas on Monday night. So Monday I'll probably just work out and get everything ready. Um, so yeah, so kind of a busy, busy week going on, a weekend. Um, and then yeah, I go back to uh, Utah and Arizona for, uh, for the wave. So super excited. Hopefully the weather stays nice so I can drive my van down the road. If not, then I'll have to hire a guide. Um, but super excited. It's been such like an amazing couple weeks with these trips and everything and getting my nonprofit started. So hopefully we can uh, start that off. I need to actually work on the website. So I need to rebuild, I'll probably just rebuild the website this weekend. 
as well. I'll start working on that. That's easy. I, I've built hundreds, 400 websites. So websites are my thing. If you need a website, let me know. <laughs> Actually, let, let me rephrase. If you need a website, pay me and I will do one for you. Not, or we'll give you like payment when we make money. Because I've got probably about 100 websites that never paid me for my work that I'm still like chasing after. Like the minute you make money off my, my creative, you don't pay me, I'll come after you. I know where you live. <laughs> so it's just like people think like one employer that I worked with, he's like, oh, we have no budget for marketing. I'm like, yes, unlimited projects. Woo! And then he goes, no, we actually have zero budget. Like figure it out for free because the internet's free. I'm like, dude, the internet's not free. He goes, well, I turn my computer on the internet's free. I'm like, it's not free. <laughs> Somebody has to build that shit. Me, <laughs> I'd like to be paid for it. So yeah, so the number of people that I have done work for that extensive work for that they owe me tens of thousands of thousands of thousands of dollars for work that I never got paid for. None of that's cool, dude. <laughs> so anyway, all right, I'm at the VA. Let me park and be sad that I don't have as much solar as they have on the parking structure here. And yeah, I was, <laughs> I go to the VA and all the, the Vietnam War, but oh, what, what branch were you in, Missy? Uh, I was in the army. They're like, oh man, I should have joined the army. I'm like, go away. <laughs> and there's even signs in there that say like, she's here for an appointment, not attention. So just to be clear, have some consideration for personal space people i don't solicit that in, that kind of attention i don't like it very uncomfortable with it uh even if i do my hair one day does not mean that you have to like scoot closer or talk to me it's just like go away <laughs> unless of course you've got like cake or like ice cream and you want to share with everybody like absolutely sit next to me and share that shit. but other than that <laughs> you know i'm just here to get my stuff done i'm not here to um, you know, have to fend anybody off. And again, it's not like, oh, I'm all that. No, not at all. I just, I just don't, I don't like, I, I don't like any of that attention unless I'm interested. And I can tell you right now, I'm not <laughs> interested in anybody here. I have my own interests elsewhere, which you will not know about yet. So anyway, okay, so let me, there's no parking. Come on, people. I think I just need to build more parking structures. I might have to go park at the Women's Center. That's always good. So uh, now I'm stuck in traffic. Traffic people. You have all these people driving these old like Lincoln Town cars and stuff, and I'm like, like from the '70s. And this person almost hitting me. Please don't hit me. Can I get this way? I don't know. Some these big ass trucks and stuff. I get that you want like a bigger vehicle, but I drive a tiny little car because it's so easy to move, maneuver around. And then I drive that big ass like cargo van but the reason I got the Nissan MV is because it fits in a, in a parking space and that's ultimately more important for me is that I can fit into a space rather than like you know I, I don't have it I mean I have it because it's a camper van but I also have it because I want to fit into a parking space so okay enough babbling I'm at the VA and I need to go in and get my stuff done and then head home so thank you downtown Houston you were not terrible today <laughs> You are actually fine and uh, came out of there with a, with a good, good result. So more on that maybe later in the world. Okay, let me go park at the Women's Center. All right, so this is the parking structure. Look how much solar they have. That's where my car is under there somewhere. I'm trying to look for the sixth floor and I don't think there is a sixth floor. I'm on the fifth floor right now, which is where I had my surgery. So now I'm trying to find, I'm supposed to go up to the sixth floor and go talk to some other departments. So I think the, uh, the attendant downstairs at the information desk gave me the wrong information. Anyway, if you haven't been to the VA hospital in Houston, this thing is a juggernaut. It will take you like half a day to walk through the whole thing. So anyway, so yeah, I was, I was up here in May last year having surgery. Okay, I've been back in Houston for exactly two days and it is like a thousand million degrees and I'm not happy too hot here way too hot anyway so i'm heading sorry the air condition is blowing um which makes my hair go Ooh. <laughs> anyway um had a bunch of appointments today to run to and things to drop off and stuff to do and bucky here was no help he just sat in the car the whole time uh, it's the only time you can leave pets in the car <laughs> is when you have a fake one anyway um so i am now going to cactus uh, music which is a vinyl record store because my dear sweet wonderful amazing beautiful, funny, energetic, creative 11 year old daughter loves records. And I'm like, oh, she's a child of the 80s. 
so she's not she's a child of like 2012 <laughs> so anyway uh, so I'm gonna go look up some records for her for Sunday so that's her treat for the week um, for doing really well in her star testing I think I don't know I didn't get any results yet but um, okay people let's go move forward accelerate you know Texans will just like decide to accelerate when they're not supposed to and they'll make up like their own off ramps and they'll flip you off when you're the right of way and I don't really know I never took a driving test here in Texas I, I took the Britain when I had to switch over to a uh, uh, to a um, Texas driver's license but I never did I take the Britain test no I don't think I've I think I've only taken one in California I don't think I had to take one uh, anywhere else so anyway here's cactus music so I'm going to park in the shade <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna go check it out it's pretty pretty damn cool i've not been to a record store in a very long time so let me see maybe i can just park right here uh that would be a space these spaces aren't marked all right let me see if i can park right here i have no idea so there's somebody behind me <laughs> so uh, and of course the um the sensors go off because uh because my bike rack is blocking the sensor so I think I can pull in here. Okay, I want this picture. <laughs> the Beatles. That's so cool. Okay, let's go in for a minute. So this is a security person. There we go. Cactus music. See if I can get an outside. Uh, where's the sign? It's back here. Cactus music. Okay, let's go in and go get some Gorillaz vinyl because that's what Harriet likes apparently. and very bright outside and I am heading to a wellness retreat uh, sponsored by some veteran organization <laughs> so it's like an all I didn't I thought it was like an hour and a half it's an all-day thing so I don't know if I'll stay the whole day it's from 8 30 to 4 <laughs> and I kind of have other stuff to do today like I'm going there to reduce stress yet I will be stressing about all the things I have to do today anyway um, yeah it's uh, 65 degrees it's gonna be in the 90s again today and I'm not enjoying it um, but I'm only home until uh, Monday afternoon, then I fly back to Vegas. Okay, so even though um, my bike is in Albuquerque, I have booked my next ticket out of Las Vegas. Um, so I'm just going to not get blinded by the sun. <laughs> it's too bright in the morning. Anyway, um, yeah, so um, I am going to continue on the Utah trip. And because I have uh, two weeks before I have to be home again, um, so that's good. So that I can just focus more on the southern Utah northern Arizona do a few more things that I wanted to do that I didn't get a chance to do and then um, then fly back out of Vegas and then I will get my bike on the next leg of the trip and so that way I'll make my way back to, to Texas after um, after that time after uh, not not this two weeks because I was gonna go fly out of Albuquerque to get the bike but there's no point because I'm gonna be flying home so I think what I'll do then is in May by the time May comes around, that's when Angel Fire is going to start opening. So I don't really need my full suspension bike until then, and I'll give them time to really fix it. I should go back to Broken Spoke and tell them that they sold me a broken bike. <laughs> it's just been such a nightmare. It's such a good bike, and it was on sale and everything, but they, I think they just put the wrong piece together because it had a spoke that was uh, too small, or like a um, where the chain goes, right? Like the, um, the cog that the chain attaches to where the pedals are. Um, it was too small and it wasn't the gears weren't catching and then the chain kept slipping so after spending another three hundred dollars at broken spoke which I think is a conspiracy um, a scam to try to fix it, it still wasn't fixed so anyway so now I'm driving into the Sun to go to this wellness retreat so this should be fun but like I said I kind of don't want to be somewhere all day <laughs> it's like I'm fine hanging out with friends until I realize I have something else I need to do that's far more important than being social. Okay, so I'm here. We're going to have a speech. We've got veterans of all different branches and ages. And I'm just sitting on the end here. I got a little goodie bag and a door prize uh, ticket. So maybe I'll win something. This is good. 
I always uh, always like to help, you know, support the veterans and myself included. I'm very grateful to the VA for all of their help and support and all these organizations that I'm hoping to get involved with in the future. So we'll see. Let's see what this is about. It's um, spiritual, Institute of Spiritual Healing, but I don't think it's faith-based. I don't think they're going to be like pounding religion down my throat. I think it's just like healing in general, like being, just, you know, good, good mind and body, which I think we should all have, whether you do it through an organized religion or you do it through just your own, you know, daily affirmations and, uh, you know, I don't know, self-worth, healing thoughts, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to necessarily be organized. You just have to try to be a good person inside and out. So, okay. Now, of course, you know, if someone cuts you off on the freeway, you can flip them off. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Morning from the eclipse day and it's raining it's like pouring with rain today but it's okay we don't actually see um, the eclipse here in Houston we're like uh, almost 200 miles away from uh, where it is so there's Bucky it's my co-pirate so I'm in a neighborhood I don't know where I am <laughs> anyway it's pouring with rain as Houston does I mean here's the thing so the people for the eclipse like this Australian woman she's like yeah mate like I wanted to come to Texas because I heard they have the clearest skies no we have the darkest skies there's a difference like you can go out to West Texas or the hill country and you can see stars you just get like punched in the kneecap with stars but if you uh, if you want to come here for clear skies no <laughs> we have the darkest skies and so all these people that spend all that money to come out here for the eclipse and lo and behold I'm completely lost hang on lo and behold you know they're going to spend all that money to come out here and they're not going to see anything today so my daughter's school is having an eclipse party so they've got like the glasses and everything and, and there might be some totality a little bit like we might get a little dark but it's already dark now it's raining <laughs> so i don't really care i saw like part of the 2017 one you know i was kind of in the same situation i was far enough to, uh, away that i was like okay i can kind of see it but i don't really care so much um but, you know, anyway, it is what it is. I mean, it's a once in a couple decade thing that you can see. People geek out at it. They love it, all that good stuff. That said, I am, where am I going? I am going, oh, I'm, okay. <laughs> I got all turned around. I had to go to the bank and uh, sort out my nonprofit. And that's official, yay. So give me money. No, I'm just kidding. I uh, know we're gonna raise, start raising money to give uh, equipment to um, adaptive adventurers and sponsor uh, activities and like get training and make the world more accessible and I got I started working on the website so when all this is official I'll let you know and then I'll be starting a whole new barrage of social media for the for the nonprofit but yes I am the executive director fancy name <laughs> I wanted to be like I don't know have some like fancy title but of course there's rules and regulations where you can only have like a certain number of like certain titles when you have like a corporation Anyway, very excited. Three years of really hard work, researching and driving all over the country. A lot of muddy boots, a lot of, uh, you know, hiking and biking and uh, interactions with weird wildlife and just meeting with all these different adventure companies and national parks and state parks and all this stuff. And I'm super, super excited. And then the retreat I went to on Saturday was really eye-opening. It was really great to see how beneficial meditation and um, wellness and yoga and all that stuff is for um, for veterans in addition to the physical stuff. So I'm hoping that Hike Bike Alike can complement, you know, the um, physical side or the, sorry, the emotional mental side of healing uh, because I'm not equipped for that. Like I, I taught yoga for years, like 15 years, but I'm not equipped for um, like understanding the, the like psychological side, only just my own experience. But I do understand the benefits because I have been through trauma and I have healed in nature. So, um, okay, so yeah, so now I've got to run a couple errands. I'm flying out today, so I'm gonna just go up to the airport about one and just leave early, get to the airport. I bought at three. It's super easy, it's spirit, but I'm at Micro Center right now because I need to download all of my YouTube videos and just have them safe somewhere uh, in case the world ends today. Everyone's like, the world is ending, it's the eclipse. I'm like, 
trust me, we've, <laughs> we've had so many false alarms on the world ending. I'm pretty sure it's not ending today. Anyway, so um, yeah, I was on the, uh, I was on an airplane during the uh, hell bop and the woman next to me was like, she's, <laughs> she's like this like old, really old Chinese woman next to me and she's all, I was flying from college home and I could see the hell bop comment from the airplane, which was like the coolest thing back in the nineties. And this woman next to me, she's like, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Look at this. Snap, snap, snap. You know, and she goes, oh, that is a bad omen. I'm like, lady, I'm 30,000 feet up. I do not need you to tell me that. <laughs> it's like, shut up. <laughs> Get your window seat. Um, yeah, so it was pretty exciting to see, but that woman scared the crap out of me. I was like, I do not need to know that there's an omen in the sky while I'm in the sky. Anyway, so anyway, Rikai right Center's here. Um, it's kind of like a Best Buy, but better and cheaper. It's right next to the Walmart and across from Sam's Club. So discounts galore. Anyway, so I'm gonna go get uh, my, uh, I can work on that at the airport. Now I've done all my videos. I've caught up on all the videos, so please check those out. And yeah, so I'm going to uh, work on stuff at the airport when I have a layover in New Orleans. So for some reason, Spirit is sending me from Houston to New Orleans, five hour layover and then to Vegas instead of a direct flight to Vegas for some reason which is fine, it's only like a $50 ticket. <laughs> so, uh, but I gotta go home, get everything ready. It's already 10.30. So yeah, so I'm official and uh, excited to, to embark on my life work of being outdoors all the time. <laughs> my life work of never going back to a cubicle. No, I just, I wanna spend, you know, the rest of my natural life just helping people heal in nature and, um, you know, just kind of making the outdoors more accessible. So that's why I'm doing what I do. And filling out, filling in the gap of it's kind of like, I'm going to say, the, the, the gray area of people that are basically not accommodated. So the people that have the invisible disabilities that still want to be active. People that are newly disabled. Maybe they had a catastrophic accident like Jeff had, like he rode his motorcycle off a cliff and lost a leg, had a traumatic brain injury, but still wants to get back into like fishing and biking and and uh, motorcycles, which never, <laughs> Jeff is never gonna, tell you right now, Jeff, if you're watching this, you're not getting back on a motorcycle. I will take the keys. <laughs> I'll put a clamp on it, one of those boots like you get on the cars. Yeah, um, no, we've gotta, we gotta figure out how that's gonna, how that transition back into like civilian life is gonna happen. Um, but then also those that have PTSD that, um, you know, they can't really relate to like normal life, right? Because people around them are like, oh, thoughts and prayers and, you know, just get over it and it's okay not to be okay. It's like, shut up, <laughs> like screw you all. I just wanna go mountain biking, you know? So there's those that kind of don't have the resources or they don't, they don't necessarily like want to get, you know, weekly therapy. Like they, they just, you know, they have trauma, they have PTSD, but they wanna kind of transfer it into a different activity they don't necessarily want to be the poster child for PTSD or the poster child for disability. So there is this gray area. There's this, this um, you know, subculture of people that have physical limitations, either like, you know, even if they were born with, with a disability, absolutely. We will, you know, Hike Bike Alike will absolutely, you know, assist and accommodate. Um, but it's, it's mostly for making the, I guess, the able-bodied world more accessible for people that have, you know, mobility assistance, adaptive technology, um, emotional needs. They need a little bit, um, you know, an instructor to, to learn how to put a harness on someone that has trauma or how to, you know, navigate somebody that has PTSD and understanding sensitivity. So getting the training for that. Also getting the national and state parks to have accessibility guides and to create programs for people that need you know, just a little bit different environment than, you know, an able-bodied or a person that doesn't have PTSD. And I think we all have a little bit of trauma coming out of the pandemic. Um, those that just like self-diagnose themselves with PTSD, like I actually have PTSD from a police assault and I will talk about that later in the world. Um, it was pretty bad and, uh, you know, it it's left me with lifelong disabilities and injuries and a lot of trauma, but I was treated for two years and I think I'm fine now. <laughs> I don't get triggered when I see a, a, someone in uniform. Um, and, uh, you know, it took a long time to get through that, but there was a lot of kind of confusion more than upset, you know, being horrifically beaten. And it was, it was horrible. Um, and it took a long time to get through, you know, all of that. And I had to have surgery on my hand. There's a nice scar on my hand. You know, I had to have, so let's go through two and a half, three years of physical therapy for my shoulder so I can finally move it, finally do chicken dance. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of like 
people that have trauma instigated by someone else and none of that's cool but it's like so what am I going to do I'm going to sit at home and cry all day no I'm going to go ride my bike every day or I'm going to go venture to a state park or I'm going to go learn about you know botanical gardens or I'm going to go climb a mountain or I'm going to set a goal of going to every national park or every state park and that's kind of what I did um you know after 2019 2020 when the pandemic started I was already starting to travel I, I bought this car I traded my my little hatchback in for this SUV packed it up and I went to Marfa in West Texas for a week and uh, it was great and um, spent a week out there did everything um, hiked and did all the art stuff and just the road trip itself was healing D yeah and it was it was fantastic and then that was January of 2020 and then I went to a few more you know trips and things and then when the pandemic started I just packed up my tent in my car with my mountain bike and I just went tent camping the whole entire year um, because there's nothing to do. I mean, I was still on the payroll of a company, but I wasn't, there was no work to do. And I was like, well, crap, I'll just start going to, you know, as many outdoor places. And then once I hit about the 30th state park in Texas, I figured I'd keep going all the way to the very last one. Um, and then as a way to break up my drives out to other states. And then I kept seeing all these vans and I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Like there's a tiny home inside that school bus. Why, why, why do you have a house? <laughs> inside your school bus I want one of those and so I started buying everything I thought I would need um, for a van that I didn't own and then in September of 2020 I started looking for the van and this is all documented you can go back three years and go oh it's raining three years and go look and see all of the um, you know the, the 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 process of trying to get a van and buying a van out in the east coast and driving it back and building it in two weeks um, but it was the best thing I've ever done and now I've got this little camper that I own and I can go anywhere and it's you know people go oh you must be a trust fund baby or you must be rich or I'm like I don't spend any money everything I do is free in the van I mean all I pay for is gas you know it's just me I don't eat a lot so you know it's like I only have kitchen so came with the house <laughs> you know I'm not a big not a big chef um and everything I do is free the national parks are free with my pass most of the state parks are free if not they're severely discounted um I get tons of veteran discounts and I can find anywhere to ride my bike you know so it's um yeah it just appears like you know how do you how do you afford this lifestyle I'm like it doesn't cost anything it costs me more to be in Houston and find stuff to do here eating out with friends or going to museums and stuff than it does for me to be out in the wilderness and so and you know to fly home on spirit it's like 50 bucks so fly home on spirit and you know $20 uber like it really is not that expensive when I'm home and I feel I have to go out with my friends and split dinner and you know all that stuff and it's like oh, it's like I you know it cost me far more to be home than than to be out so but yeah I mean it, it really you know during the pandemic and after coming out of the 2019 incident where I got completely injured and just trying to be able to move more and, and then I started doing downhill mountain biking and I started getting into hiking and rock climbing and all this stuff that I never did before but then I would see other people in the same situation and I thought okay all right, so they're they're doing what I'm doing, and I thought I I was doing this because it was the only my only choice was to heal this way. Because during the pandemic, you couldn't go to a hospital unless you had COVID, and I've never had COVID. So, you know, here I am without any medical resources or anyone to talk to. You know, everybody's you know, you have the people like pseudo complaining, like, oh my god, I can't believe that my kids are home all day in the pandemic, and I've got to do online school and stuff. You know, so you had kind of those those. Um, complaints which I guess were legitimate in their bubble but for me it seemed very trivial I was like trust me there's far more bigger problems in this world than the fact that your kid can't go to prom um so you know I started realizing that okay there are a lot of bigger problems that nobody has a voice for and nobody is hearing the real big issues uh domestic violence went up 70 percent in Houston people were having more you know depression there was more suicide there was more uh you know problems where people couldn't get their medications because they lost their job and they lost their health insurance, you know, and, and, uh, you know, the unemployment was, you know, yeah, they got a little bit extra for being unemployed during the pandemic, but it still wasn't close to what they were supporting their family with. And so there were all of these problems and then people were like, okay, I'm just going to go start exercising or I'm going to have a quarantine talent or something. Um, so I, I looked at all this and I thought, you know, what? I need to do something. <laughs> I need to start something, create something where I can connect the dots and bridge the gap among the places where you can go, the things you can do, and the people that want to do it that maybe don't fall into a category of, you know, especially with disability, maybe they, 
you know, they don't even feel disabled. I don't feel like I have a disability most days until like I realize that I can't lift something because of my spine or that I can't move my arm back because of my spine or, you know, I'm completely hurting in the morning, you know, and then I'm reminded, oh yeah, my spine's screwed up. Um, but most days I just, I try to just, you know, be as, um, as normal as I can feel to be. Um, but it doesn't mean that there isn't anything wrong. Of course there is. Um, but when, the, when I do need assistance, then I'm like, oh yeah, I need someone to help me lift my bike onto the, the ski rack. So that said, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's why I'm, I'm starting what I'm starting. And, um, it's been really amazing, really eye opening to, to go through this process of go around the whole country. And now that I've seen every state, the 48 states and the 51 national parks and 89 Texas state parks, and now I'm doing all the natural state areas, the general consensus is all of these outdoor activity centers, even in places that I generally don't really like very much, like Moab, where I feel it's kind of a little, little bit egotistical, every place was like, hell yeah, we want to help. We want to, you know, train our instructors on sensitivity. We want to embrace veterans. We want to, you know, we, we want domestic violence survivors and trauma survivors to try abseiling down a, a rock or try canyoneering or whitewater rafting. We want them here. We want to, but we want to understand what that, what their perspective is, but we just don't have any customers that are in that category. And then on the other hand, I'm hearing people like in this retreat I went to and things like that, where people are like, oh my God, I, I go home every day and I cry and I really wish that I had somewhere I could go and do something different. Like this woman that had a service dog, she was like, I, I really wish I knew where I could take my dog so that, you know, we can do more things together um, so that I can be more active, but I'm just not sure where I can go. And I told her, I gave her a whole list of places. I was like, oh, all of these places will welcome you with your service dog. Um, and yeah, so when I, so I'm hearing this and I'm seeing this, these places exist, these people need a place to go and bridging the gap. So that is the goal of my nonprofit on day one. <laughs> so... I might be like biting off more than I can chew, but to be honest, um, it's just a matter of asking, you know, it's uh, because, you know, not everyone qualifies for a blue placard. Uh, I don't, my legs work, but my spine doesn't. Um, so, you know, my arms don't necessarily on most days, my hands cramp up and it's hard to like do intricate wiring or open a pasta jar. Um, and so I just stare at the jar of pasta and be like, I would just have plain spaghetti with nothing on it. So. Yeah, I mean, there, yeah. So I I know that, that there is a need for this and people that don't qualify for blue placards or people that are percentage rated service connected disabled, you know, they've been, they've been, um, you know, labeled or, um, you know, uh, considered like, you know, you are officially like injured by the military and then they just get thrown into the civilian world. And at the retreat I went to, some of them were saying like, it took years before I could even find a resource, you know, or find a community that I could be part of. And some people don't want to be part of community. I do solo travel. I like solo hiking. I don't necessarily want to always do group activities, which are like disability focused, but I want to be able to participate in activities and concentrate on, on the parts of me that work versus the parts that I'm constantly struggling with. Because I find it easier if I can figure out like ice skating, for example, I can ice skate all day, every day. Um, but can I do a cartwheel or backflip? No. <laughs> so, you know, I, I love ice skating when I'm ice skating. Nobody knows that I have upper body issues. Um, and for me, that's really healing and calming that I can just go out and do all that and not have to constantly have to explain myself because I think that that adds to the trauma. Some people just want to go fishing or they want to go, you know, um, you know, they want to go for a walk or they want to go for a hike or they want to, you know, go to a museum or something. And, but they don't want to have to constantly have to wear that neon sign above their head. And some people aren't ready to be that person. They're, they're still navigating their newly disabled body. They're in, maybe they're in a car crash or they had an assault or, you know, some catastrophic injury or combat, you know, injury or, they have like multiple sclerosis or some nerve damage, whatever it is, some people are just not ready to have to be everything regarding their body. They just want to get outside. And I hope that makes sense. Of course, my, you know, um, nonprofit will absolutely anybody that 
would like assistance, uh, any, anybody that has trauma disability, you don't necessarily have to be a veteran, can contact and we will find, um, you know, we'll find some way to help you. Um, but the primary, primary focus of, um, of getting the adventure companies involved with the people that want to do it is specifically to, to bridge that gray area gap of, of the newly disabled people, people navigating a new body, people that have trauma PTSD where they've never had an outlet, people that are going through, you know, a domestic violent relationship, but they want to go do something on a Saturday morning just to kind of clear their head so that they don't end up going crazy. Um, because, you know, when you, especially if you're in a narcissistic, you know, if you're up against someone that has narcissistic personality disorder or sociopath and, you know, they'll, they know that you're right, but they'll make sure that you go crazy trying to prove it. And so a lot of people are like, look, I just want to go for a walk in the park, <laughs> you know? Um, but that's what I want to do. So again, we will obviously, we don't discriminate. We'll help everybody that we can. Um, but our projects are focused on bridging that gap. But if somebody would need some ultralight equipment, and they said, hey, I've got, you know, I have a bad back. You know, I threw my back out working at the um, construction plant. And, but I really want to go on a hike to, you know, want to hike the Pacific Coast Trail. Or I want to go, you know, out to Guadalupe Peak or go out to Yosemite. But I need some ultralight equipment to do that. Then, yes, we will, we will find a way to get you that ultralight equipment. Um, and, yeah, so, um, but, our, but like I said, the specific projects that we plan are going to be focused on that gray area. Uh, the Jeffs of the world, the people that are in my situation or, you know, um, people that have, you know, kind of that they feel like there's no place for them in the outdoor world because of their their situation or condition. Our goal is to basically bridge that gap. Um, but, you know, anybody can contact us and say, hey, you know, can you help? And if we can't help necessarily that day or that week, we'll put you in touch with an organization that can. And so... Um, the idea is we don't want any dead ends. <laughs> we don't want anybody that's kind of left out going down the wrong trail, you know, in life. And um, we want to make sure that everybody gets to experience what they want to do. But some people need a little bit extra help. Maybe they need the financial help to pay for the, the experience of the trip, or maybe they need the equipment, or maybe they need to find, you know, a hiking buddy. So we'll have a buddy system. Uh, maybe they just want to, um, you know, know that they can contact a ranger if they have a question. Or maybe they just need basic information and, and they just want to go onto our website and find that. So I'm working on building everything out now that we're on day one. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to go to Micro Center. I've got to go home and pack and get the house just put together, sorted. So I do this thing when I leave for a flight. I make sure that my home is completely immaculate because I have this fear that like if the plane crashed and the news crew comes in, I don't want to have dirty dishes or like underwear or like my laundry still in the dryer, which has been in the dryer for four days. I want to be like the news crew comes in and goes, wow, she really has an impeccable house. And so sorry, her plane crashed. <laughs> I'm like, I know, like I want to make sure my bed is made. I have this fear. I just never want to like... <laughs> Because I'm a journalist and I'm like, I don't want to be that person that's got like half eaten burritos on the counter and, you know, a bunch of dishes still with the water in them with the, the soap. That's not, and the toilet not flushed. Like, I don't want to be that person when the news crew comes in. So anyway, <laughs> all right, I'm going to go get my hard drive and I will see you on the next one. So yay, super excited for outdoor accessibility on a rainy day on the eclipse. So world is not ending today. The world is beginning. And I hope you all have a good day. And uh, if you did see the eclipse, leave a comment. Let me know how it was because I can't see crap out here in Houston. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm going to be like in an Uber on the way to the airport when it's supposed to be like totality in, uh, in Austin. So anyway. All right. Well, thank you. And I look forward to sharing more about Hike Bike Alike. And I'll let you know when the new socials are up. And uh, yeah, I'm going to start figuring out how to make like higher quality videos like... Um, you know, more uh, aspirational and inspirational videos for the, the new channel when that launches probably, I don't know, early next year. Um, but the rest of this year is going to be basically building the website, getting the socials up, getting connected, starting to create the projects and getting the funding and connecting the dots and just kind of getting going and getting a couple um, good uh, trips out there so that we can start getting you guys on the, on the you know, boots on the ground, <laughs> but not in a military way. <laughs> so hiking boots on the ground or if you're one of those people that wears Crocs, just make sure they're in sport mode. <laughs> so um, we should do that. I should have hike biker like Crocs, like hiking Crocs. <laughs> so I just want to 
this is anyway it doesn't matter okay so i will see you later and thank you and yay so excited for my new venture okay bye <laughs>